This video is brought to you by DistroKid. Do you want to make wide, guitar-driven future bass that's ready for any Top 40 radio? If you said yes, keep watching because here's how Griffin makes future bass. I'm Ash. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm a producer from Toronto and I help you turn your little bedroom jams into banger status. So let's get started. First, set the BPM to 140. Using a piano, write a chord progression. Like many of Griffin's songs, it's gotta be poppy and radio friendly. So I picked a major key and to keep it super easy, use C major. Since we're in C major, you can modify any basic chord by adding notes till they sound good, as long as they're on the white keys. Then make it 16 bars long, so it doesn't feel super repetitive. These are the chords I ended up with. Notice how I don't just repeat this one over and over. Take note, future bass producers. Griffin also likes to use a lot of guitars in his songs, so you can spend five years learning how to play guitar or get really lucky on Splice and find a loop that fits the chord progression perfectly. On top of that, you want to find a really poppy guitar riff, something that literally goes back and forth between two notes because the top 40 kids' brains can't comprehend anything more than that. And transpose it if you have to. Add a bit of delay on it. This will also be in the drop eventually. And finally, bring in an ambience in the same key from one of your favorite YouTubers whose attention you're trying to get. Now, marvel at how amazing this all sounds together. Copy the chords over because that's how future bass works and then chop up the guitar so it plays on the off beat. Now Griffin normally uses a palm muted guitar but I decided to take some of my own liberties because it is my video and I'll do what I want. Over that add an arpeggiated bass. I just used the root notes from my chords. Um, hi, I'm actually an expert on all this, as you can clearly see from my Dharma score on online wheat forum Reddit, but this is not an exact recreation, so. Actually, a great way to learn from other producers is to recreate as much as possible, then make one or two elements something of your own. That way, listeners hear something familiar, but it's also different enough for them to be like, yo, this is cool. Well, why does your video title then say how to Griffin? Okay, this isn't how Griffin does it. <sighs> okay, fine. I'll add a palm muted guitar then. Dude, you're not even original. Try being like a little bit creative. How come all everything just sounds the same? No one's even creative anymore. I'm posting this. I'm commenting on, the, on, on, on everything. Sigma grind set, baby. You know what? I'm doing what I want. Finally, this cool four minted pad that follows the rhythm of the bass. I made this using Serum. Big kick drum. Also add in some cinematic drum loops that make you feel like Nathan Drake from Uncharted. Cause just like all future bass producers, we're all stuck in the mid 2010s. Hi-hats on the 16th. Helicopter, helicopter. And white noise reversed as risers. Don't forget to hint at the drop lead by sending a reverbed version of the lead. But I'll show you how to make that in a second. And right before the drop, 
Never forget the tom fills. Make sure to EQ out the lows and add OTT and saturator to make it punch. Altogether, that'll sound like this. Add in a drum rack and pick a nice, clicky, beefy, bassy kick. EQ out a bit of the lows, add a bit of saturator, and a snare with a thick, sloppy start, and obnoxiously long tail. Make sure to transpose the tail down. Bro, why? That sounds like doo doo. They, I can honestly make a better track than you. Bro, just because something sounds good by itself doesn't mean it's gonna sound good in the entire mix. When I made the snare, I had the rest of the song playing at the same time, so trust me, it'll sound good in the mix. You know what else sounds good? Having a song ready to go and sharing it with the world. But how do you do that? Let me introduce you to today's sponsor, DistroKid. DistroKid is a service that you can use to put music into online stores and streaming services. These include Spotify, iTunes, Apple Music, Tidal, YouTube, Amazon, TikTok, and more aka where everyone is. The best thing about it though is DistroKid collects earnings and payments and sends 100% of these earnings to you, the artist, minus banking fees of course, but there's even more than that. DistroKid also offers automatic revenue splits, so if you collaborate, you just tell them who to pay and how much to pay them and they'll do the rest. Hyperfollow is a pre-save marketing page created within minutes of uploading your music, so once your release goes live, they'll add links to it. Lyric supports where you can add lyrics to your songs and send them to all the streaming services. Global timed releases so your releases go live at the exact same time everywhere and even more, including promo. But if this sounds expensive to you, don't even sweat it. DistroKid is only $20 a year. And because you are watching this video right now, I've got a very special VIP link, which gets you 7% off your first year. So sign up with that link, save a little bit of money and get your music out there. And as always, thank you so much DistroKid for sponsoring this video. Using those drums make a dubstep-ish rhythm. Make sure to leave lots of room at the end for toms. Add crashes on the half note. And pan them a little bit to the left. Bring in those same fast hats on the 16th. And pan those a little to the right. You want to simulate a real drum kit. So imagine where the hats and the crash are going to be in relation to the crowd. And then pan them accordingly. Once again, add some percussion in the back using the same Nathan Drake drum fill. And altogether, your drums will sound like this. Bring in the first four chords from your intro and rearrange them so that the top notes are closer together and there's a lot of space between the bass notes. Chop them up so that there's space for the snare drum. Download this Super Saw preset from my Discord and make a friend while you're over there. Make two MIDI tracks and set their ends to the track you just put the chords on. This lets you pan one left and pan one right. You can see better how to do this in this video here. This makes them nice and wide. If you're still confused about these, you can always ask me live on my Twitch. So follow that as well so you know exactly when I go live. I group those two saws together and add an auto pan set to these settings with the rate of one quarter note. Now you could be like Griffin and just draw in this automation using utility, but I don't hate myself, so. Use a glue compressor to tighten everything up, cut out the lows, mid side EQ, and add OTT and saturator. Lastly, just a little bit of reverb, just for fun. As for bass, I'm pretty sure Griffin uses a bass guitar, but I just use a chunky mid bass instead, which is layered with the sub. Make sure this is all side chain to the kick and snare to prevent mud. Bring in the guitar from the intro and chop it up into a catchy melody. 
Make sure you book a fancy studio in LA and hire the best engineers so you can record that same lead distorted with amazing tone. But since I'm not a rich kid from LA who can afford 12 different guitars, I just use this guitar amp sim from Waves. And yes, of course, that also costs money, but you know, this is the internet. You can get anything. But if you don't have Waves, I've also remade it using Ableton's amp and cabinet. And you can just copy these settings here. Uh, I will say this doesn't sound as good. It's close enough. And there's other amp sims out there, so go explore. Have fun. Add delay, micro shift, and reverb to widen it. Now, to have it blend in with the rest of the sounds and not have it sitting on top of your mix, all you gotta do is sidechain it. I've got everything sidechained to one group, and I use the program Duck. I set it to one quarter note, and this is the curve I use. So this makes it so that your synths will all duck out whenever the kick and snare hit. Make sure to EQ out any harsh frequencies. These are where I made the cuts. And I also use Smooth Operator to help me out as well. Without it, it sounds like a giant mess. And that lets the guitar sit in the mix perfectly. Add support layers as well, like this clean guitar, a synth version that follows the melody. This is just a CJW wave with a combs filter and a version that's just super distorted and reverbed. I used hybrid reverb with the tape high speed time setting. <laughs> Add a bit of ambience by freezing a vocal hit. That's me. As for lyrics, just write something vaguely sad. This is what I came up with. Never felt at home around you. But, you know, I think Oliver Tree just does it better than me, so. I fell down to earth. So as you can see, it's pretty straightforward as long as you pick the right sounds. Piece of cake. If you want to get into more detail about how to write better chords for future bass, I've got this video over here. Or if you want to see how I make the super saws and basses, you can check these videos out over here. Now, let's take one last listen through the whole thing from the beginning. And if you like what I'm doing, want me to keep making these, make sure you hit like, share the video, subscribe, comment on it, but only if you learn something. Thank you so much for watching. Now go make some bangers. And the result is... Let me taste that flesh, it's my favorite